This is Matthew Cratters, Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about Bitcoin Core, Gold, and Soft Forks. We want to begin with the breaking news that the software version that mortally wounded Bitcoin Core as an organization has now officially been released. Bitcoin Core version 30 is live and available for download from the Bitcoin Core website. I definitely do not recommend downloading this and running it. I view it as an attack on the Bitcoin network and as actual malware. As Jimmy Song writes here, monopolies don't last forever, clearly referring to the demise of Bitcoin Core and pushing through this update really has destroyed them as an organization. They've lost 20% of the network, as we can see here over the past few months. Hopefully it was worth it for them. Bitcoin Knots currently at 21%. So we're living through historical times. If we look at the release notes for Bitcoin Core, we can see that they have, uh, it says here, in accordance with the security policy, we will in two weeks disclose low severity vulnerabilities fixed in version 30. There are five of these, but the irony of this, of course, is that version 30 ships with one of the most high severity vulnerabilities we've ever seen in Bitcoin, which is this policy change of increasing data carrier size, increasing the amount of data you could put in an upper turn is increased to 100,000 bytes up from 83 bytes. So this is just completely reckless mempool policy. As Satoshi writes here, Bitcoin Core version 30, now with optional monetary use. Core 30, the last update you'll ever regret installing. Warning may remove policy diversity, weaken monetary incentives and node power. Use irresponsibly. Side effects include homogenized mempool, clear text, CSAM, spontaneous taproot wizardry, and interest in ship coins. I think Chris Sota here has an interesting summary of the Opportun War that we've just been through and that's continuing. He writes, the entire Opportun War has been fascinating to observe. From the beginning, the core developers have tried so many angles to gaslight Bitcoiners into believing that they're doing what they're doing is good for all. When following everything from start to finish, if one sits back and takes stock, version 30 is so obviously malicious and core is corrupted by external forces or internal contempt for us, or maybe it's just an echo chamber. I would add that to the comment. Chris goes on to write, it's sad that Bitcoin quote unquote stewards in core have arrived at this point, but Bitcoin has no master and I hope the people's stewards have the will within themselves to take the actions necessary to ensure Bitcoin grows stronger, not weaker, whether through building alternatives such as ocean mining or educating the masses with transparency. He says, do your part, be a node runner. Then he's kind enough to go through and thank Bitcoin Mechanic and thank me, Luke Dasher, and a bunch of other people. If you're enjoying this video so far, I'd pause really briefly here just to ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. Now, if we look at Bitcoin Core version 30 adoption, we're still stuck at about 240, 241 core nodes, which is very good because this is not software we want to see run on the network. As I discussed in yesterday's video, I was talking about possible ways to save Bitcoin. Schadenfreude, who I subsequently had to block, writes here, I thought that Bitcoin was the most perfect thing in the universe. You have made at least a thousand videos proclaiming its infallibility. How does it need to be saved? It's actually a pretty good question. My response, Bitcoin is not an inert commodity. It's an anti-fragile digital asset and network that routes around attacks or is strengthened by them. The history of Bitcoin is one crisis after another. That's really important to remember. And I've covered them extensively on my channel. At its heart, it's important to remember Bitcoin is a social consensus. It's much more like the American experiment than a physical commodity like gold. When the founding fathers set up the current American system, it was not a one and done situation. The founding fathers created a robust system with clever checks and balances, but it's been up to every succeeding generation to protect and renew that system. As the saying goes, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance, whether that was Jefferson or, or whoever originally said it. I think the same is true for Bitcoin. The price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Bitcoin is this weird social consensus replete with its own checks and balances, incentives, and various equilibria states. 
Bitcoin has shown itself to be remarkably resilient, adaptive, and anti-fragile, even through the current crisis. People who have been scared by the current crisis are welcome to retreat to physical gold. I know there's been some talk of this, but we still come up against the fundamental properties of gold, which are inferior to Bitcoin because gold is bulky. It's hard to store. It's hard to verify. It's hard to move around. It doubles in supply every 35 years or so. It could double in supply even faster if you find another huge vein of gold or a comet or a meteorite or something like this. So these properties of gold, these physical properties, and just the fact that it's physical, these properties will handicap it forever. And it was gold's failure that gave birth to the current fiat system in 1971. And this current fiat system, gold, has been unable to rein it in and stop it. So basically, my belief is you're never going to defeat central banking with gold. Whereas Bitcoin is quite different. Bitcoin is hope, as Michael Saylor likes to say. Bitcoin is our once in millennia chance at monetary freedom. And I think Nick Szabo gives us the necessary historical context here about what a special time we're living in. Nick writes, the last time 2009 to 2011 happened, basically the birth of Bitcoin and early adoption. The last time this happened may have been circa 4600 to 4598 BC in the Danube Valley, modern day Austria, I suppose, when they started making gold beads, a much better store of high value than copper or shell beads. So we're still living through this monetary revolution. Bitcoin is nowhere close to being dead. It's a very, very robust network and asset. And we're going to do everything we can to protect it as Bitcoiners. Like the American experiment, Bitcoin is worth saving. So then the question is, where do we go from here now that Bitcoin Core 30 has been released and we've been unable to stop the release? Problem is Bitcoin Core 30 nodes will now be circulating large unconfirmed op return transactions around the network and helping them to get mined. And inevitably, those large op returns will contain CSAM, state secrets, leaked personal data, and many other toxic things that should never ever be allowed to be stored in large data blobs on a monetary network like Bitcoin. For this reason, there seems to be a growing consensus in the meaning of agreement to limit op return data at the consensus level. And it's important to notice here when people say consensus, there are two ways of using it, one in the general sense of agreement, one in the technical sense of Bitcoin consensus and consensus rules. So we have mempool policy, which is what we've really been focused on for the past few months with Bitcoin Core 30, and it's blowing open the op returns as mempool policy. But mempool policy concerns what gets circulated, what transactions and get circulated around the network before being included in a block. Consensus is much more fundamental. It's what's allowed in a mined block. So Bitcoin Knots has strict mempool filters, but it does still accept large op returns that have been mined and included in a block. And this is important that it does do this, otherwise we'd have a fork. This is why running Bitcoin Knots is not a fork of Bitcoin. It is a mod of Bitcoin Core software, but it's not a fork in the sense of a consensus fork. Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin Knots node runners all agree on the same Bitcoin transaction history and the rules that must be followed for transactions and blocks. So they're still in consensus. Now, no longer allowing op returns greater than 83 bytes would be a soft fork at the consensus level. This wouldn't be just mempool policy. This would be what is actually allowed to be mined and accepted in blocks by nodes, uh, by blocks that have been mined by miners. It would mean that old large op returns that have already been mined would remain in blocks and still be valid, but that node runners would no longer accept op returns greater than 83 bytes in new blocks. Soft fork is always defined as a tightening of the consensus rules. And so this would definitely be a soft fork. This would not be a hard fork. It would be backwards compatible, etc. We could also set this at the current knots default setting of 42 bytes instead of where core has been for almost 10 years at 83 bytes. I would suggest though, if we were to move forward with a soft fork like this, if there were consensus, I would su suggest keeping it at 83 bytes, just in the interest of garnering wider support, wider community support for a possible soft fork. And Pierre Rochard has interestingly recently put forward the idea of using a soft fork to completely remove op returns at the consensus level. So I would I would say keep them at 83 bytes, but he's actually advocating for completely removing them. He writes here, this was October 11th, so recently, then let's entirely remove op return with a soft fork. This would be a consensus level change. And Pierre writes here, I'm for an immediate soft fork to entirely remove op return. I agree that keeping it is an unnecessary risk, and I would definitely agree with that. So I would ask all of you guys, would you be in favor of a soft fork to limit large op returns 
greater than 83 bytes at the consensus level. This would be a soft fork, not a hard fork. It's important to emphasize that. There would be no airdrop of new Bitcoin. We're not interested in something like that. Would you run this new software version either in its knots form or core form? We could have dual clients like this. Both clients would be compatible and run the new consensus rules. Would you personally run this new software version on your node if we were able to get Umbral and Start9 to update their software and allow you to run this? If so, if you'd be willing to run this kind of software, please type yes in the comment section below. You'd basically be running a new type of node. If no, please type no. I'm really curious to see what kind of support there is for this, even in our small community here, because we now have this problem, Bitcoin Core 30 being live. These things are going to be circulated they're going to start to get mined. And so we really start to, we really need to start thinking about what we could do at the consensus level to stop spam. And there is widespread agreement, I believe, in the Bitcoin community. I've seen Adam Back say it as well, that everybody hates spam and no one wants these blobs of large arbitrary data on Bitcoin. But maybe it's time to address it at the soft fork level. So let me know, type yes or no in the comment section below, and we'll see what kind of support there is here and possibly on Twitter as well. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.